On to the part of Ice Avenge Pro. This time we're going through the Platinum Cup as Mama. Again. We're doing Big Mama the entire time, I think. We're not going to change any cars. Anyway, uh, Platinum Cup. It will start off with, you know, all the shit we did in the Silver Cup. But now, there's some changes to them, which... Again, you got these changes in the PS1 version, so it's not going to be that much of a difference. Though, there are some bits here and there that I will bring up that are going to be important for you if you are going to go through this version. Let's begin, shall we? The start of Pirate World, because of course we are, the start of the pirates. So, now we're going to be going through the boring one of the water area for the pirate level, because... Obviously, we're going through the town this time, which means that we're going to go through a tunnel that will lead into the town area, and as you can pretty much see, it is all just straight lines. There's very few, if any, good little bumps to take on, and it legitimately is just long straight lines with nothing else going on. I mean, you can see that bugging out, at least, on the speedometer there. I don't know why it wants to bug out. That's one of, like, the little weird graphical glitches this emulation has, but, eh. Yep. I mean, be careful this little corner here, because it is a bit of a, a shitty corner. Well, actually, this corner here is a real shitty one. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a, a blind side if you're going for the turn, because you're probably thinking turn left sharply, and then boom, you're going to the wall. Anyway, that is it. That is legitimately the entirety of the path. That is different. The rest of this is essentially the exact same as the second level. As you can see, uh, it is longer. And not only that, but it is worse by a good margin because it's just straight lines with nothing that eventful to look at or be, you know, enthralled by. At the very least, in the, the second level of Pirate World, the initial water level essentially, there were some interesting bits here and there. And for the most part, it didn't outstay its welcome. It was enjoyable. It's cool. It has this jolty fucking, like, jaunty fucking uh, music here and everything. It's great. But yeah, the fucking problem is just the fact that when you get this version, it literally is just long hallways of water. It is so fucking easy to figure out where to go and what to do here. And what's worse is that because it's all a corridor, that means these long ass traits of like this one here make you a very easy target for any enemy. Though, they don't give you that many weapon pickups around the place in regards to it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just bland as fuck. I mean, there's also a right turn here I could take, but why would you? It's longer. Like, why would you go right and then go around this island to then go forward here? So, yeah, that is all of Pirate World, really. Uh, all four of these tracks. This one sucks. Um, the first one is kind of, eh. It's, it's neat, has good music and such, has a nice look, but ultimately the third version does better and the second version of the water stuff, second level of it, is the best one to me. So yeah, um, not much else I can say about this because this is legitimately it. Oh, so that's me trying to get a bit of a bump going on. I feel like in a way, 
like, if you were to go with speedrunning this game and everything, some of what I'm saying, some of what I'm showing you and all of that may come in handy in regards to being able to figure out routes, figure out what's fast, what's slow, figuring out, you know, what you can do to get a little bit faster, get a bit more of a push forward in places. It's just the one thing that hasn't figured out yet is how to increase your top speed overall without being stagnant at like 61. Like you can go to 63 if you're able to figure it out. There's really not much commentary I'm given, is there? It's just because this is legitimately just a long, boring shit track. Like, it really does outstay its welcome. And it's nearly two minutes long. Like, this, this is not a long track. So yeah, Pirate World... It has its moments, but ultimately it just ends on a whimper. And it really is just overall, the entire time, the same map. So yeah. It really outstayed this welcome. The dolphins are cool at least. But yeah, that's it. And I just quickly moved on because I didn't want to fucking deal with it anymore. <laughs> I wanted to be done with that. So now it's time to get straight back into the RC Revenge tracks. All the stuff we've gone through in the PS1 version. And see if there's anything different or noteworthy with this shit now. Let's see what we got next, because we're starting off a car. I swear to god, the loading takes so much longer at the PS2 version compared to PS1. All right, it's time for this one, in which, uh, yeah, for the most part, it is very much like the PS1 version, except a bit more hilly, because I'm pretty sure there's a bit more hilly going on. I could be wrong again. I could very much be wrong again. I know the plane's still here. You can see it. Let's see. Nope. Nope, I was wrong. I think the PS1 version was the hilly bit, and they got rid of all of those hills in the PS2 version. I feel like I got completely backwards. It does make this a lot easier, especially if you're doing reverse. Because you're not having to go uphill a fucking steep waterfall and fight against that current to be able to push forward. It does make this a lot more of a flat level, to be fair. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's, that's really it. Just the fact that I guess they got rid of some of the hills, some of the waterfalls, and they made it a lot more flat because of that. Makes it easier to go through the water path, at least. You don't have to worry about, you know, having to not turn while you're going down here, or else you make, like, a sharp turn and fuck yourself over. Like, you don't have to worry about that shit anymore, but... Yeah, it, it does make this a little bit more... boring, I guess you can say. A lot less unique and eventful compared to the PS1 version. This tunnel still sucks to get around though. Trying to get through all of these sharp turns and such. Not fun. Not fun. I think that can use the use of the bump there. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's fine. There's a thunderstorm going on here. You can see it's raining.
By the way, I was gonna do a whole fucking bit for this Let's Play where I essentially do the reverse of what I did in, um, like, the original RC Avenge Let's Play where I would just be like, oh man, I, I am just so done with this shit, you know? Like, th this whole... This whole channel is so overdone now, and I just want to move on. I want to be something different. And then I go back to calling myself the Stick Kid and continuing on as the Stick Kid from the parts when I changed to Syndictive from the original Let's Play. I was planning to do that. My thought process was going to be doing that, but that was Mum's back. And now it's just like, is it really gonna be funny? Like, is is that really? It, how many people here actually know of my old channel, really, or give a shit? Like, how many of you even know me from the old channel? Besides people that like I keep in contact with, like Spike stuff and Crystal Fisher. Like, how many of you actually know of my old channel? And have ever watched anything from it. So yeah, um, ultimately, I, I'm not doing the joke. I'm not doing the joke. It it's not that funny of a joke, and it wouldn't work with the audience I have currently. So you just be confused. Two, one. Go! Also, it mean I would have to somewhat commit wholeheartedly on the joke and upload the rest of the let's play and all the time trial shit onto the stick kid channel which by the way i do still have access to i still have the login details and everything but i i don't want to move back there i really don't i'm happier being here i'm happier being zen tsk that era is dead like I, I don't I don't want to be him anymore. I don't I don't want to be that past me who was massively a fucking like abusable idiot who didn't know any better. Also, the blockades are now animated. They now show you the fucking tons just dropping down, and just doing that whole little bounce thing and such. It's pretty neat. So it does mean that you don't actually realize the block is coming until it happens and so you have to make a sharp turn at the very beginning if you don't anticipate it. Which, this shit happens twice, so, yeah. Anyway, as you can see, not much else to this. Uh, I mean, the tornadoes still fucking suck. Of course, I get Thunderstruck. And, uh, yeah, the little animations that were added in for this are pretty cute, pretty neat. They fit for the toony vibe this world's supposed to have, but, um... Yeah, ultimately... Oh, yeah, the oil slicks. I, I hate the oil slicks. I'm pretty sure they sucked in the first game too, they sucked in the PS1 version, and they still do here, and that they like to affect you very quickly as soon as you shoot them out. <laughs> it's just so useless. And the AI will really not get affected at all by the oil slick, so it really is still, to this day, one of the worst fucking weapons in this game, that oil slick. It is so shit. It's so shit. Let's see, what else was shit with the weapons in this game? Uh, the rockets, only really useful if they're in front of you and you have that lock-on thing going on. Somewhat useful for you if you can just get, like, a forward push as the car and utilize that in a way. That can, that can help you out. Um... The shield, the shield's still good, especially against Thunder Strikes. 
Thunderstrike is overpowered. It's the blue shelf, everybody. Um, the mines, they do okay. Throwing them forward, not so much. Throwing them forward is not a good move. Hit them backward, though, and you're good. Um, the bubbles, the bubbles suck still. The bubbles still suck. The boost is still good. The boost is still very useful, especially with speed running. And yeah, that's that's it. oh yeah, and that that's still a good move to have. It's a big, wide area of effect, still top notch. So yeah, the weapons in this game, really only the thanks, really only the water bubble, and the um the fucking oh yeah, and there's also the fake out. Which, it's very obvious when you see it. It could affect the AI if you place it in a a very unhelpful spot for them. Like, you place it in, like, a, a corridor, essentially, like a small corridor. They'll drive into it, more than likely, and get hurt by that. So that, that can have some uses. But, uh, yeah, um, for the most part... In regards to overall just the weapons, like the water bubble and the oil spill are garbage. I mean, the oil spill, sure, you use it here on the water, it's gonna fucking, like, be glue, essentially, to the AI and such. But... It's not that big of a fucking spot. And again, it will affect you as well. You will get slowed down by it too. It's it's just so dumb. It's so bad. Anyway, here is this track which I don't think has changed whatsoever. <laughs> My memory is being shit about this game, but yeah, in regards to this, like, this has not changed really. The crystals are still here. You can somewhat get some weird ass bumps out of them, but like that one there. Also, another thing is, I think, yeah, they got rid of, uh, but there's still like a push there, but again, it's flattened. Like they got rid of that whole, like that downward thing that would happen in the PS1 version. They got rid of that entirely. It's it's still like a current, but it's a flat current now, essentially. A little bump in the middle. I do question their thought process on essentially flattening out some of these waters. Because waterfalls do exist, like, the logic is there for that. I'm not sure why they got rid of it for a, a few of these levels, like this one and the jungle one. Because it's the most prominent when you get into the fourth type in this game. That you're noticing, if you play the PS1 version, hey, it's a lot more flatter than it used to be. I'm not I'm not getting pulled around as much as I used to. I'm not I'm not getting much of a push. You know? And again, like this version is ultimately slower because they nerfed the cars as well. They fucked with the stats. But they didn't actually compensate the stats correctly on the car selection screen. So in case you're wondering, the stats on that fucking screen when you choose your car, ignore them. They are inaccurate, they're not going to help you. Some cars are slower than they actually show it. Some cars steer worse than they actually show it. Like, they, they really just fucked it when it came to this. And, what's even worse, 
is as far as I know, there's no button to, like, switch the cars into boats. The PS1 version, you could just press a button and transform it into a boat or into a car at your will and see what each one is like. You can't do it here. So yeah, a visual upgrade, but there are some things that are just kind of missing. There's some downgrades here and there. But to be fair, we got Pirate World, and Pirate World is kind of neat, so... Also, the loading screens really do fucking suck. I swear to God, we've gone straight to level by now in the PS1 version. But here, here we get just so much loading. Now, this track has gone a few changes. One, go. One of them is got these spooky, scary skeletons all kind of being weird and shit, which is neat. Got a horse there as well. Another thing comes later on, which I will basically show you. It really makes things a little bit easier for the end bit. But, um... Yeah, for the most part, most of the change to the visual. However, this track did get some small changes here and there. Which ultimately did make it easier. Also, not for Rocket, but that target's still on him. I think for this area, I think it got a little less bumpy. Actually, it got a bit more bumpy, actually. I don't remember. But, the time of day is different here. It's nighttime here when I think it was like uh, fucking mid morning beforehand. This still is a trick, by the way. You can still do this shit. But, the main thing here is you can go under the chairs now. Which means you don't have to dodge around that shit now. You can go through them and go for a straight line. Which is far more helpful than the way it was in the PS1 version. Also, you just saw there how fucking far you went with that rocket shot. You can utilize it to some advantages when it comes to straights, you know, if you don't have a boost, have the AI just shoot a rocket at you, and it will just push you forward a fair bit, you just have to keep yourself straight at that point, and you're good. You might get a little bit of a slowdown, sure, but I think you gain a little bit more out of it than you would just not gain shot. I think, I think that dog there, actually, was not there in the PS1 version. Or he was there, but he was not so much of a wall in the PS1 version. In this version, that whole right side is almost entirely blocked. You can't get through that. And there's a weapon pickup there. Really not helpful. So, uh, yeah. That's, that's it, really. I mean, to be fair, I do prefer this version of the track over the PS1 version, because of the chair thing. I did not like the whole going around the chair thing in the PS1 version. I prefer it just, you know, being able to let me go under it. I mean, visual looks a lot more cooler, even though these axes do get in your way. But they are visually distracting. But 
But yeah, ultimately it is still the exact same track as it was in the PS1 version. And uh, yeah, that's it. That leaves us as one more track. And uh, yeah, it's going to be the uh, the monster one. Which... I don't think has gotten any changes at all. Except... Except... You can go out of bounds. In this and the level 2 one. It's more noticeable in when you go in reverse. But essentially, there are gaps here where you can just uh, turn into a boat. Kind of go outside from away from this bridge here. And you'd be right outside where you can go through the boxes and shit. And... You can utilize that shit to also entirely go through walls and skip massive amounts of the level. It's, it's fucking mental how much you can break this. At this level, I think it's one of the most broken in the game because of how just... Essentially, they got rid of almost all of the fucking, like, barriers that used to be here. And because of that, you can go out of bounds into the fucking abyss area. It's... I don't, I don't understand why they got rid of the invisible walls. Because a lot of it made sense. And they were there in the PS1 version, but... They're not here anymore! <laughs> so yeah. That's all I gotta say. Like, it is, it's a funny little level to figure out at this point, especially on the PS2 version, how broken it is compared to PS1. But it is still the exact same level as it was in the PS1 version. Nothing's really changed. Overall, that is the main difference you are getting from here. Like, this. You have now seen, essentially, all of the changes from the PS1 version to the PS2 version. All of the big track differences. When we get into a verse, it's pretty much exactly the same as the PS1 version with the way it like, you know, opens areas up for small amounts of tracks, so you can actually do it in reverse. But ultimately, it is, you're going the same path for all of them. It's just the main changes are gonna be the shit you've already noticed from going normally. So yeah, that's it. Which means that Reverse is going to be a very interesting thing to Let's Play to do the commentary for, because it's going to be hard for me to get any kind of commentary out of this at this point. I don't think this shit through very well, do I? Anyway, we beat Platinum, which means we now hit the Reverse Bronze, as well as the Yellow Car. And... If you were to actually beat the time trials at this point for all normal stuff, you'd also get the UFO. So, next time, we'll be doing the Reverse Bronze Cup. Thank you for watching, I'll see you then for that.